afternoon express and listen with summer just around the corner it's all about summer dining entertainment on this afternoon express masterclass with me Bali Sat Embe. the revered chef Lazy Makoti is back in the kitchen to help us whip up potato and tuna salad chakalaka chicken dog roll-ups pineapple and ginger lamb chops and a delicious chocolate wraith cake for dessert if you would like the details to any of today's recipes please do head over to afternoonexpress.co.za now back in the loft since 2019, we're joined by chef and cookbook author Mohuao Sichuan. Now she's well known as the Lazy Makoti. Her first cookbook, The Lazy Makoti's Guide to the Kitchen, is a local bestseller and went on to win numerous awards, including the prestigious Gourmand World Cookbook Award. Now she's back three years later to extend her winning formula with her brand new cookbook, Hosting with the Lazy Makoti, a celebration of food. Mukhao Siswa, welcome back to The Loft. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, first and foremost, I feel like watching your journey and having like, you know, it almost feels like a front row seat when I'm on your Instagram. It seems as if, girlfriend, you have not stopped. From your very first cookbook, now to your second cookbook, it almost it seems like time has truly flown. Whenever I go to the, um, the airport, I still see your book there <laughs> on the shelf, bestseller. Um, whenever I go on social media, people seem to still be loving that old cookbook now as I usher in this new cookbook how is this different and what's the story behind hosting with the lazy Makoti? oh Balesa, um, I think from the success of the first book I've always known that I will definitely keep uh, making cookbooks it's something that I absolutely love that I'm passionate about about just sharing um, how to make delicious meals for your family mm -hmm. and that's exactly what's in this cookbook I mean the inspiration from this cook of this cookbook is actually everyone that follows me on social media all the recipes that everyone's been requesting be it in lockdown and even before that mm -hmm. um, and I think this is a really great time it's summer everybody's um, the world is like opening up yeah. so what better thing to do than to host and celebrate you know food really is all about celebration and here in Afternoon Express we believe in celebrating every single occasion and that is also mirrored within your cookbook I mean, from breakfast with Bay to, yes. you know, those weekly family dinners and meals to major, big, large celebrations. It seems as if you've kind of ticked off every box. Why is this the main focus of your personal brand and then extended to the second cookbook? Like you're saying, um, I think every moment is worth celebrating. And we've actually kind of really learned that in the past two years, that every moment is special and that we should make it special. And that's why in this book, I include all those um, different moments, whether it's breakfast with your family, like you said, um, a lunch, a dinner, and then those really big um, celebrations yeah. like Valentine's Day and Christmases and Easter. So I wanted you to have a recipe for each occasion that's going to happen in your life. Okay, I love that. And I'm so about it because essentially in my house... I've got a library of cookbooks. So it's exciting to know that I've just got a one-stop shop here with um, the hosting book. Secondly, you are just so vocal about being inspired by the women in your life. Mm -hmm. From Umama to Ukoko, you've got such fond memories growing up in that kitchen. Mind sharing some with us? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the inspiration for most of us that cook. You know, if you think about your first delicious meal mm -hmm. or memories that are really fond, that make you happy, they all sort of involve food they involve time in the kitchen yeah so for me it's no different my mother and my grandma who I used to cook with a lot yeah. are really the inspiration behind what I do and how I do it I do recipes that are easy that are accessible mm -hmm. that, that invite everyone back into the kitchen speaking about being easy and accessible now this is something that kind of went over my head but being able to learn more about cooking, I realize that this is pivotal. Mm. You focused on using milliliters and not grams. A lot of cookbooks and a lot of cookbook authors, they always put everything in grams. Why did you decide it's so important to focus on the milliliters instead? So another great passion of mine is actually um, being accessible, having all South Africans be able to share, you know, in the delight of cookbooks. And another barrier can be, you know, 
recipes that are in grams that requires you know a kitchen scale not everybody has it not everybody has the money to invest in a kitchen scale but they will have money to buy measuring cups yeah. so why not make these recipes truly accessible to everyone i want everyone to be able to enjoy it and cook everything and love it something else that's been very prominent over the past two years is the culinary industry definitely took a knock with COVID-19, people not being able to entertain. Um, however, you seem to be thriving. <laughs> you really do seem to be thriving. It seems as if you're always busy, you always have your head up high and you're always delivering. So how have you been able to remain so persistent and just that strength, where does it come from? Um, I think the one gift of, you know, lockdown and everything that's happened is I actually got time to work on the cookbook. That's when I did the majority of the testing of the recipes, the majority of writing and actually putting it together. Um, and so, you know, you'll remember that when it all started, it was supposed to just be two weeks. Yeah. So, and then it just extended. Hey, those 14 <laughs> days ended right. up feeling like 14 years. <laughs> right. Um, and in those two weeks, the plan was to just keep everyone, you know, motivated, get online and cook with everyone while they're at home and then it became two other weeks and then I saw you know the great response that people really needed this so when all our vices were taken away be it the booze the cigarettes the potting like outside was really taken away from us yeah. um, this was the one thing that people had you know food and being together and sharing together online so I guess in as much as I was helping them they were helping me and now we have this cookbook I love it, it kind of definitely seems like that collaborative thing that you've got with your followers. Yes. Do you still see yourself as this celebrity chef? Because every single time I sit down with you, you're just so real, down to earth, grounded. It's as if you're just here for the food, honey, and the celebrity stuff can go away. How have now you been able to shift your relationship with your followers, being in the media, being in the mm -hmm. forefront, being the star of your own show, honey, and still being able to stay true to the food? I think I'll always just be me, um, <laughs> whether it's yesterday, today, and yeah. even years to come. I'll, I'll always be me. Mm. Um, I'm just like my food. It's it's not bougie. It's unpretentious. It's simple. It's delicious, which is what I love. I mean, the whole reason I do what I do is because I want everyone to be able to to enjoy these delicious foods. Yeah, and we are giving South Africa an opportunity to walk away with this cookbook that's going to bring in those delicious foods into your very own household. So so for that lucky viewer and other viewers who possibly want to purchase your book, what can they expect? What can they look forward to? And girl, I know I always say this to my <laughs> chefs. You know how you ask a parent, who's your favorite child? This is kind of the same thing, but I'm going to challenge you. What's your favorite <laughs> recipe in this cookbook? That is the yeah. worst question yeah. to yeah. ever get. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, which parent has a favorite child? I don't think... Any parent well, has a favorite shouldn't. child. They shouldn't. <laughs> At least they shouldn't. Um, but yeah, I really try to include, like I said, all those occasions where you would want to uh, make delicious food, which is all occasions, from like a breakfast to a lunch to a dinner mm -hmm. to weekends when you're hosting um, to... Proudly South African uh, meals, which will always be in all the cookbooks I do, to a chapter dedicated to African food from around the continent, to those big, big celebrations. So I just tried to have everything in there. Um, I love for a cookbook to be useful more than anything. So I don't want you to just look at the pretty pictures. I want you to also know that you actually can make it every day. I love that about you. You're also an award-winning cookbook <laughs> author, honey. Your accolades speak for themselves. In fact, you know in high school when we had those blazers and the prefits would have all like, almost like a Christmas tree on your blazer. <laughs> those are the same accolades I can ask for like, or rather see in your own life. Are you hoping that this cookbook will take it all the way to the top? <laughs> what, what's your wildest dream and exploration of this cookbook? I can see people whipping this up in the middle of Europe. Um, I actually hope so. Yeah. I hope so. I really, um, the goal will always be for everyone to find it accessible, um, to know that they too can make delicious meals. You don't have to be a chef, but if you're willing and you want to, you can have beautiful Instagrammable food every day. From an award-winning chef, you heard it here first. Mm -hmm. Now hosting with the Lazy Makoti, a celebration of food is a must-have. And you could win yourself a copy of the Lazy Makoti's book if you've been inspired or 
all you have to do is answer this question. What homemade recipe reminds you of a loved one? Super simple. Share your answers onto Afternoon Express's Facebook page. T's and C's do apply and can be found on our website. This competition closes at 12 p.m. Monday, the 22nd of November, 2021. There is a classic mayonnaise that brings out the traditional French in three levels of tanginess. The mild classic, the medium classic, the strong classic. Tangy, the way you love it. Made with love by Clover. Ask our guest chef, the Lazy Makote, and she will tell you that there's nothing better than a lazy summer lunch with some potato salad. It's quick and easy to prepare. It bursts with flavor, leaving you with the title of the hostess with the mostess. Now, before we touch base with our Lazy Makote, let's welcome back to me, South Africa. Welcome <laughs> back to myself. I am happy to be here with the Lazy Makote herself. Because, Yay! darling, this is something I absolutely love. A potato salad for me is something you cannot omit whenever you're entertaining or hosting uh -huh. and I'd like to think that every chef thinks himself thinks of themselves as a host in some way right we are kind of you know <laughs> constantly and I love the fact that we're going to be using our clover classic mayo in this but you're going to start it off start us off with the base of this potato uh -huh. salad right so what do we need so obviously the most important thing our star the potatoes <laughs> um in this salad we're also using some tuna okay. um some red onion for that beautiful color and then speaking of color of course we adding herbs okay mm -hmm. which is like my twist um just to make it nice and summery mm -hmm. and very flavorful now so i can tell that you're also focusing more on the baby potatoes yes is there a reason behind it? Because I know a lot of households in South Africa, they just go for that big old sack, honey. <laughs> you know those big potatoes? Can we still use that synthetic recipe? Yes, definitely. You can still use your big potatoes. But of course, this looks much, much nicer. And I love that about mm. food. When it looks great, you just feel like it's, it's going to taste great. Mm. It's as if you were in the loft a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> we're speaking about the popularity of baby veggies these days. Mm. It looks great. They definitely, nice. I hope, believe, I don't know if I'm right, but I believe they they just hold that much more flavor. There's a certain sweetness, like when you're using baby carrots, mm -hmm. um, a baby mm -hmm. sweet corn. So I love the fact, Chad, that we're focusing on the baby potato. Now, mm. and of course, we live in the Instagram era. So you want to put it on your Instagram, on your TikTok, and it's going to look so pretty. <laughs> and hopefully I get as much followers as you have, girl, because, see, wow, the CC is just popping on the, on, 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 the, on the social media streets. Now, as you do continue adding the different elements, mm. Dumi, this is completely what our social media question is about. It's is and I love the fact that we can change it up however we like but the one thing that stays constant with any potato salad is a good mayonnaise and you need to make sure you've got that in there because it carries all of the flavor and the best thing about the clover classic mayonnaise particularly is that it is a great source of uh, you know vitamins but also it's got three levels of tanginess we're talking about the mild medium and strong so you can just you know zhuzh it up or choose the one that works best for you and so for the dressing that I'm going to make for our potato salad I've put in here some parsley that I've chopped up I've got some salt and pepper, and then into that, to add a little bit of more spiciness, I'm also adding some of our uh, um, Dijon mustard. Or oh, I see. Yes. You know, Dumi, last night, and, and I was telling, actually, Umukhaw in the makeup room earlier that I made a delicious salad last night, mm -hmm. and it was a chicken Caesar salad, fine, but they said to make a homemade dressing, you have to add some Dijon mustard, and I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and anchovies, actually. So what is it about these flavors, especially in a salad, Chef, that kind of elevates the flavor? Flavors. Um, it actually adds some saltiness as well. So you want that delicious umami. Um, I actually love homemade um, yeah. dressings. Really? Yeah. Um, it just also encourages you as you taste yeah. all of these flavors to keep trying new things. Absolutely. Mm. And I love what you're saying that like, you know, when you do make your own homemade dressing as Dumi is, you know what went in it. You know, a lot of, a lot of places add added sugars and funny stuff. Things that you probably want to stay away from in the summer and we are focusing on summer dining, especially entertaining. Yes, and we do want to keep those summer bodies. Honey, or try. <laughs> tell me about it. Okay, so you're, uh, Dumi, you're done. I am, but I just want to ask you something, Chef, because we're making potato salad here, and some people tend to want their potato salad a little on the drier side. Some mm -hmm. want it on the runnier side. How do you prefer yours? I prefer 
all that dressing. Yeah, so mm. make it runny, smother it with all I of agree. that dressing. <laughs> I agree with you because it's as if the, the, there's not enough dressing, you can't actually taste the potato mm. salad. So the more the dressing, the better, because it also gives you the opportunity to then add on more flavors. Like I see now, we've added some chives into yes. there. So you could play it however you like. Obviously use some um, uh, light herbs like your, your parsley's and your, and your chives and stuff like that. But if you were perhaps roasting your potatoes, then you could use like hard herbs like your thyme, I guess. Oh, definitely, Roast. definitely. And I do love that the dressing, like you said, carries so mm. much flavor. You can add whatever to it, make it your own, mm. and then dress your salad. Mm. So I'm gonna have a taste of this potato salad. Please I wanna do. experience all the flavors that you're talking about. And honey, if this is in the Lazy Cookies <laughs> brand new cookbook, trust me, I wanna find out. I'm, I'm gonna give you guys a rating. <laughs> and tell me if you can taste that mustard that we added in there, as well as the tuna, because it mm. adds that touch oh of saltiness gosh. that Chef was talking about. It's fresh. Mm. Yes. Something that a lot of potato salads miss, I think, is just the heaviness of it. They end mm. up adding, you know, when you add the eggs, which I can, I suppose is another protein alternative. Mm -hmm. Adding the different things, it ends up becoming really heavy, but this is so light, so airy, and I also love the addition of the tuna and that uh, pop of color from the onion. Mm, just the perfect thing to have with your braai. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, oh, yes. yes. Yeah. What if we were to prepare our potatoes on a braai? That would actually uh, add that smokiness. Ooh. So, so delicious. So mm. definitely, if you want to, that's a great tip, actually. Mm. Any other tips and tricks when creating the perfect potato salad? Because I know South Africans, they get kind of touchy <laughs> about their potato salad. <laughs> My brother being one of them. Siabonga, shout out to you. He does not play about his potato salad. So what are those tips and tricks to remember? Um, I like, I also love that a potato salad is a great uh, make-ahead type of salad. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to be stuck in the kitchen while everybody else is in enjoying the braai, yeah. so definitely try to make it ahead. And if you don't like the tuna, you can always add other things to it, like some fried bacon, just roughly chop it into there, add so much flavor as well, mm. so I love that. I can only imagine preparing the potatoes on the braai, the smokiness, and having some of those diced bacon in there, just mm. elevating those different flavors. So if you would like to get your hands on this recipe, buy my house cookbook, but also head <laughs> over to afternoonexpress.co.za. <laughs> now on social media, this is what we want to find out from you. Summer is nothing without a potato salad. So what's the secret ingredient that separates your potato salad from the rest? Use that hashtag Afternoon Express in all of your comments. Now coming up, we've got a chakalaka chicken dog roll-up recipe that your kids will love to make and eat. Plus, we get a special guest visiting us. <laughs> Protect what matters and get a quote for a life insurance plan that suits your needs and stand a chance to win one of eight Samsung Galaxy S21 phones plus 100 gigs of standard bank mobile data for a year. To enter, SMS the keyword LIFE to 31492 to get a call back and a quote. It can be. You could be a winner.
special little guest. Now, kids love cooking, so getting them involved in the kitchen can be such a fun and lovely bonding experience, even if it turns out to be a bit of a cleanup nightmare. Today, we're going to show you how to make something so good, it'll simply turn into a firm family weekend favorite. Chakalaka chicken dog roll-ups, and someone who can definitely attest to this is our special guest, Dumi's little one, Ubushokwa. Isn't that right, boy boy? Uh -huh. <laughs> Are you excited to start cooking? We're making <laughs> chakalaka chicken dog roll-ups. <laughs> Isn't it so funny how kids all of a sudden get stage fright? But he was talking up a storm just now. Do me take us through it. You don't know what to eat. Well, I, I'm about to. I, I don't know what was it. Okay. Oh, you couldn't remember. I couldn't remember. But we're making chakalaka chicken doll roll ups. And what we've got chakalaka here. Chakalaka chicken doll roll ups. That's what he said. <laughs> Even though it's a bit of a cleanup at the end of the day, the fun part is it, gets, it gives you an opportunity to bond with your little one. And as you can see, he does this now, but once the food shows up in front of him, it becomes a different story altogether. <laughs> <laughs> now, Pali, I'm just going to ask you to help us then to just warm up our um, tortilla wraps for us. The only reason we're doing that is so that they're more pliable, more easier to roll, because we want to make sure that they roll up nice and tightly to keep everything in there. How hot do you need my pan to be? Right now, I can tell you have it on a one. You can put it on the highest heat, because all on we the... want is just to... Not even toasting it up per se, because it's already cooked. We just want it to be warmed up. Okay. It literally takes about two to three seconds on each side, and then we'll start. In fact, when you're done there, you can put it down here for the mister here to do what he needs to do, to show us how to make these roll-ups. Do you know what we need to do next? Chakalaka. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And then put, and then put the cheese on. And then put the cheese on. And perfect. Then put the, uh, and then put that on. Then... Okay. <laughs> Awesome stuff. So every time we're cooking in the kitchen, I'll be telling him that this is how it's done, and then he comes back and says, no, mm. this is how it's done, as you can see now. Pali, I think that is perfect, actually. We can have, move it over here. Here we go, boy, boy. This is how it's done. And the other reason why we've chosen to use Vianna is because this mister here loves his hot dogs. And if there's different ways where you can include hot dogs into your children's recipes, I mean, why not? Mm -hmm. So, and I've warmed up our chakalaka just to make it also a little bit more spreadable. So I'm just going to spoon that over here. Okay, Papa, boy, do you want to just put that for us there. Just spread it on the tortilla for me. Bushok, what do you like helping mommy in the kitchen? What do you like about helping mom? Eating? Yep. <laughs> and also making. And also making. Aww. And tasting. And enjoying. <laughs> and is that important to you, Dumi? Is it very important to have your little one involved in the kitchen, knowing how to whip up food for himself? Because one day he's going to grow up, honey. More than anything, I want him to be able to say what he likes. I think a lot of times as parents, we always choose for our kids and we yeah. think this is what he likes, this is what he would want. And then most times they're like, no, but I don't like this, I like that. And then this gives them the opportunity to, to be in the kitchen with you, choose what they like, decide whether this is a flavor they want to try. You know, sometimes we do very adventurous things, like adding flavors you wouldn't normally add. But yeah. the best part is when he's there, he gets to choose what he likes and taste as he goes, which is a quality of any good chef. Taste yeah. as you go. <laughs> is it too hot? No, it's not. We chose the, chose the mild one for today. And so to make it simple, all we've got here, we've got a layer of our chakalaka. Make sure it's mild, parents. You don't want it to be too hot for the little ones. And then we do a nice layer of cheese on top of that. And we're going to roll it up with our chicken viannas that we've got here. And right now we're using the original flavor. It does come in other flavors like the cheese and stuff. But the one thing I love love about this is that it uses only chicken, real chicken product. And the other thing is there is no pork. There is no MSG in that. And you know that you're serving your children quality, but mm -hmm. also getting that moment to share and spend time in the kitchen. Do you want to roll it up for me, Bob? <laughs> awesome stuff. And you want to taste it, maybe? Bali, you've also got a taster on I that do. side. I do. I know that you're not a parent yet, but I'd like to think that once you do become a parent, this is something you will enjoy making with your little one. Definitely. I'm already just seeing us uh, having different serving stations. One on the chakalaka <laughs> station, one on the chicken Vienna station, one on the roll-up station. Um, I love the fact that it's also very interactive. Mm -hmm. Very interactive, Papa. You can have a taste over there and tell me what you think. Mm. Tell me if you want a bit more. Wait, yeah. wait, wait don't poke yourself. <laughs> okay, let's do this. My partner in eating. <laughs> Cheers, boy, boy. <laughs> Ching, ching. Now it seems as if, you know, the proof is in the pudding. It is so delicious and also very filling. And best of all, we made that in 0.2 seconds. So to keep your weekend meals tasty and simple with Simply Chicken. This get your hands on this recipe by please visiting afternoonexpress.co.za.
chef in the kitchen knows all about it. His mouth is filled with food, Dumi. This is what it's all about. This is definitely what it's all about, making the food and making sure he enjoys it. Yeah, and he seems to be quite an easy crowd, but we have still got so much more food coming your way. Get ready for an unexpected flavor combination as we're making pineapple and ginger lamb chops with the Lazy Makoti. Back to Afternoon Express, where we are bringing you nothing but the best of the best. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we've said goodbye to our one special guest, Butlokwa, and we've said hello again to the Lazy Makoti. Welcome back. Thank you. Now, girlfriend, we're about to prepare something that's like one of my favorite cuts of meat of all time. Are you ready? I'm so, so ready. I can't wait for you to taste this. Well, let's get into it. Have you been looking for the perfect recipe to wow your guests this summer? Well, look no further than the Lazy Makoti's pineapple and ginger lamb chops. She is in our kitchen today to take us through every single step of this delectable dish. To so take it away, chef. It's so easy to make. Mm -hmm. All you need, of course, your lamb chops. And then we're just going to wrap this with a very easy spice mix. That's paprika, uh, salt and pepper, and then some steak and chops. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, chef, it seems as if, you know, we all have our own different ways of preparing lamb chops. Mm -hmm. But something that I've seen as a commonality, they always add mint. Mm -hmm. Now, you completely turned this on its head, Shredder. <laughs> I did. Tell us more. Um, so this time we're doing um, pineapple and ginger. So just adding different flavors that you wouldn't ordinarily to still make something delicious. I mean, that's what cooking is about. Mm. Experimenting with different flavors. Dumi, have you ever heard of this flavor combination? You don't know how excited I was that this is coming because I was like, not only are we making, putting the pineapple in a salsa, but we're putting mm. it in the actual glaze. So you can ah. imagine the flavors that come together. That right there is summer. That right there 
there is pina colada in hand, lamb chop, lamb chop yes. in hand, <laughs> salsa in hand. That for me is a meal in one. I'm Double flavor. <laughs> Girl, it seems you really promised us a whole lot when it came, comes to the second cookbook, mm -hmm. but it seems as if you're delivering time and time again. How important is being experimental, flexible, kind of looking into your fridge, say, okay, I got this, I can got this, I can make this. How important is that to you? That is extremely important. Mm -hmm. So once you learn like a basic recipe, how do you take it to the next level? Yeah. I mean, especially if you have family and people that you're cooking for, you want them to be excited about the new dishes that you're going to make. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Dumi, on your side, I mean, you we always speak about playing in the kitchen and trying different things. For this recipe, what's the one thing that sticks out, do you think? It has to be the combination of the pineapple and the, the coriander. I mean, oh. if you try those two together, you've got the herby, earthy flavors of the coriander that pop in your mouth. Right. Now, if you pair that with the sweetness of the red uh, onion and the pineapple, which mm. just clears your palate, Balisa, it's an absolute, absolutely amazing flavor burst inside of your mouth. And then we just obviously need to add that uh, touch of lime juice in there to make sure that we clear it all. And you know what, I'll see what when it comes to this, this <laughs> one right here absolutely works for me because you can put it right on top of your lamb chop you can wow. serve it on mm. the side if you want to you could even add something as fresh as your um your yogurt to this just to cool down mm. as well but i think this is a winning recipe definitely absolutely now lazy makoti you've put in a whole bunch um, of ingredients for that glaze what have you put in so far into that glaze and um what is very important to remember because i've never prepared a glaze to go on with any protein so I just added in here um, some pineapple juice, um, some soy sauce, and some honey. That honey will help it thicken. Um, so as it cooks, it's going to get thicker and thicker and sticky and just yeah. gorgeous and delicious. So it really is summer on a plate. And best of all, you can actually also do this on the braai. Ah. Mm -hmm. So now how about, I don't like to cause a lot of dishes in the kitchen. Would it be possible? Hear me out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. Okay, I'm a lazy. And talk about lazy, my boy. That's me, that's me, that's me. So as we are preparing the lamb chops on this mm -hmm. kettle, on this pan, beautiful, am I able then to remove the lamb chops and then just create the glaze in that same pan and then just pop it all in? One pot wonder. I mean, you and me. Yeah. You and me. Um, that, those are recipes that I love the most. Yeah. That call for as few dishes as possible. So you're spending as little time in the kitchen as you can. Yeah. So fry this up, set them aside, and in that same pan with all this flavor mm. in here, use it and make the glaze. Yummy, yummy, Simple. yummy. This is what I like to call it for formas, Plalisani, because you're <laughs> making sure that everything gets into that pot, you're packing all the flavor, and it's still going to give you exactly what you need. <laughs> when was the last time I heard of that? <laughs> Well, let's see uh, how this tastes. We're experimenting with flavors here. It is summer, so we're celebrating all of that summer goodness by biting into these delicious lamb chops. Now, this is something I've never tried before, so here goes nothing. Now, Chef, I just want to touch on something, right? With that glaze that Bunnis is about to base, we're doing it separately here, and mm -hmm. you could add it into the pot, but you could can. you also use it to baste your lamb chops? Yes, definitely. Once you have leftover sauce, please go ahead and use it to pack on that flavor. It's like yeah. you're building a house. Yeah. A house of flavor, actually. <laughs> I can imagine that. Pali? La la la, yes. <laughs> Isama, this is delicious. I'm even going in with my hands. This is a dish that you definitely need. So, me tell the people where they can get this recipe. You can get it on afternoonexpress.co.za. Absolutely, Tumi. Now, when we return, we're ringing in the festive season for dessert with our delicious chocolate wreath cake recipe.
back to the laugh now, Lazy Makoti. Do you have a sweet tooth? Of course, doesn't everyone? No, <laughs> I don't. Dumi, are you excited for this next one? Because I know Dumi loves herself some chocolate. You know I love my sweet stuff and you know I love my chocolate. So this is a win-win for me. Well, let's tick off all of those boxes. Summer and the coming festive season are always filled with surprises and special occasions. And you need to be ready. So the Lazy Makoti is still with us and she is going to show you how to make this beautiful chocolate wreath cake that will make any occasion a festive affair. Yes. 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 I'm excited to convert you. Oh. Okay, because yes. so many chefs have come through here <laughs> and so many chefs have promised to convert me, but mm, I mean, they always good, but I don't find myself making it at home. So I'm pretty sure if I walk away with your cookbook and all the tips and tricks, I'll be able to. And plus, this is super easy to make. I mean, it's gonna have even you baking. Uh, yeah, I'm intimidated <laughs> by baking. I could not believe that you're about to whip up this cake in front of our very eyes. Mm -hmm. It's super easy to make. So what I'm basically doing is just combining the dry ingredients, you know, the flour, the cocoa powder, uh, baking powder together. And then I'm gonna combine the wet ingredients. And then that's it. A Little bit of salt. And then just combine those. So these are my dry ingredients. Okay. And then mix, mix, mix. And when you do mix, I mean, a lot of people, they before they add their wet ingredients, they add a well, they create... Is that necessary for this um, recipe? And they fold in the, the ingredients, the wet and the dry. Just make sure that you sift all of your ingredients to add a bit of air into your cake because nobody wants, like, a dry, stale cake. <laughs> and then now for my wet ingredients, in here is some butter, some sugar, uh -huh. and some egg. And then I'm adding in my milk and then a little bit of vanilla essence it smells amazing already right and then mix 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 chef you've touched on the fact that you don't want your egg, your your bake to be dry and i think one of the few things when it comes to bundt cakes unlike um cakes with layers which have mm -hmm. cream or frosting in them uh people tend to end up getting i mean when baking a bundt cake it, it tends turns out dry what do you think is the trick for making sure it's still nice and moist and doesn't have that dryness to it because the only cream or frosting you'd actually get from it would be on the very top the other thing you want to make sure is that you're not over mixing okay so please Please always make sure, you know, don't fight with that cake. <laughs> Be nice to it. So you're just mixing until everything is combined, then please stop. Yeah. yeah. So over mixing is a no-no. It's a no-no. I didn't even know that that was such a thing. <laughs> and Dumi, you also mentioned, this is called a, a band. And Bundt bunt cake. A bundt cake. Bundt cake. And yes, we, you, we've got a bundt cake over there, but you could use any type of uh, um, cake tin with a, a hole in the center of it like we've got over mm -hmm. here. So you could be very adventurous. But the one thing I do love about the, about the bundt cake specifically is because of what you've got there, Chef. You've got it as a wreath cake. Mm. So you could actually gift it to someone as a, a celebration for the festive. I absolutely love that. And just look at it. It looks beautiful mm. and festive, and it just screams Christmas. It really does. It's just transporting me straight back to KZ in Durban around Christmas time. Mm. We all love to decorate a beautiful wreath at the end of the day. And this is kind of reminiscent of it. And do me the idea of gifting it takes it up a notch. I mean, you're talking about a celebration of food in your yeah. book. This is exactly what it is. You're celebrating and then gifting it to someone. Mm. This is what the festive is about. Gifts all round. Yeah. And Domi, what are you up to on your station? I'm just chopping up some additions because I decided, because <laughs> Chef is the star of the show here, and I'm making it something. Because I figure you could do that, Chef, because you're so adventurous. Mm -hmm. You could add anything to your cake. You could even add nuts into it. Okay. And she's like, and on that note, I want it right now. <laughs> I'll take them. I actually love that. Um, that for me is what festive is about. Being in the kitchen with your family, with your friends, and then kind of making the recipe your own. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to add something, let's mm -hmm. go ahead and do it. Let's do it. Yeah. And I'm also just slicing up some uh, raspberries here because the other thing I love about what you've done is that you've paired the tastiness of the chocolate with the freshness of the berries and you've also got that beautiful green color from the rosemary. So you could even flavor up your cake with the rosemary inside. It's completely up to you. But Chef, I love the adventurousness and the flavor. Palace is waiting to taste. She's like, let me finish. And I also want to find out this rosemary, <laughs> can we eat it? Just as is. It's decorative. Oh, so you want that like... pop of green. If you think about these colors, these are the Christmas colors. The green, the red, so beautiful. Definitely. And you know, I can see that you've drizzled on um, a whole lot of Clover Bliss here. And you know, at the end of the day, Clover Bliss for us is the ultimate addition to any dessert. It is a ready to eat indulgence. And today I just poured it over just like this because you don't need 
to whip it up. You don't need to bake it. You don't need to fuss over any of it. It's ready to eat indulgence. And you can use it in a recipe or as a snack on its own. So here we've used it in this recipe. I can only imagine if we were to add some of our bliss into the batter, how would that work? Mm -hmm. It definitely would work well. You just want to make sure that you still keep to the ratios because you don't want the cake to be heavy, which is what Chef has mentioned. But Chef, how long does this go into the oven to bake for? So this goes into 180 degree oven for 30 to 35 minutes, then you have your cake. And yes, Bali, you've got something to say. <laughs> Slow clap. <laughs> You promised to convert me, girl. Mm -hmm. This is delicious. I see it's succulent, it's moist, and also it's not too sweet. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get overwhelmed. I've also got sensitive teeth, honey, let me tell you some. So if I bite into something sweet, mm, my teeth just go like this, but this is so easy to eat. I love the addition of the berries as well, Dumi, because it adds that extra bit of freshness. So to get your hands on this recipe, simply head over to afternoonexpress.co.za. with love by clover one of our favorite regulars jenny morris will be in our kitchen when we come back so don't go anywhere Express yourself. our pharmacies are on the front line of healthcare. this is pharmacy of the week to serve this community as a pharmacist is quite an honor we are there to guide and to reassure and to dispel myths uh, in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic. Bravery is recognizing the challenges and then making a concerted commitment to work through the challenges despite the difficulties that we, we face. And I see myself and our staff members, our fellow staff members being brave in the fact that despite the risks that the COVID-19 pandemic has posed to us and our families, we've made the commitment to serve the very community that we are located in. In the words of the famous Mahatma Gandhi, I believe the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others and that's the ethos that we believe in ourselves here in Gortis of Pharmacy and it's an absolute honor to serve the community around us. Pharmacy of the Week proudly brought to you by Adcock Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave.
back to Afternoon Express as we are sticking to the summer theme. One of our favorite chefs, Jenny Morris, stopped by the other day. So I got the lucky chance of catching up with her as she showed us how to make her mom's favorite special occasion dish, a Moroccan chicken. Let's take a look. Our moms all have their go-to special occasion meal that is whipped up for birthday parties, graduations, and everything in between. No matter how far you are from mom or how back or long ago graduation was, just one bite of that special occasion meal takes you right back. This is quite a special recipe for you. Listen, darling, this takes me back to my childhood uh, where we had a Moroccan neighbor and beautiful lemon trees. And you know the Moroccans love lemons. Mm. And they've got to be ripe and sunny and fabulous. You can plonk that and lots of aroma from you here. And what would happen was she would come down and say to my mom, would you like to give me some of your lemons and I'll teach you how to cook Moroccan. So this has just the most incredible memories for me because oh. um, of all those beautiful spicy flavors um, and the preserved lemons and the things that uh, she would teach mom to do. And you know, in those days, you never really had fancy fancy because no one really traveled as much. And what would happen is, my mother would pull this dish out every time she had visitors and thought she was ever so posh, you know, because she was cooking this Moroccan meal. And I loved it so much that I now take people to Morocco on, on food tours. You so, are very yes, well traveled. Yes. But before we get to adult well traveled, Jenny, I love the memory that you just said with us. <laughs> the fact that you used to look this up with mommy, um, but also trying to impress and say thank you to a certain neighbor. I think that's what's just so iconic when it comes to not only recipes like this, but when it comes to an ingredient like Rama when it's in the kitchen. I mean, Rama is just so versatile and it truly is everything that we need in um, something that is just goes on generations to generation to generation in our household. And, it, and this is what I love about things that are passed down because you've got something like Rama that never changes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that is the thing that holds the whole dish together. You might want to add a little spice that's a little bit extra or a different herb, but if without the Rama, it ain't going to taste the same, girl. It ain't going to taste the same. <laughs> and I'm so glad that you brought that up because Rama is a versatile product that adds that unique, indescribable taste across various applicants. And right now, we are making our very own special Moroccan-flavored Rama. We have just added so many different Rama, spices. Rama, Rama. I even <laughs> add a song to it. You see, that's actually what transports me to uh, how I grew up yes. being in the kitchen with mom and dad yes. and our cocos. I wasn't much of a cooker go growing up. I used to always watch and I used to always be on entertainment duty, obviously. Yes. So I was the one singing. <laughs> I was the one uh, putting on the music. I was the one dancing. I used to make my mom twerk. Trust me, I had twerk really? for your dinner, girl. Absolutely. Teach me to twerk. Um, so, uh, it's that fun. It's that, uh, just, you know, the energy that it brings in the kitchen Absolutely. for me that is indescribable. Absolutely. Can I just add my oh. rama flavored Moroccan? Put it right in. And here I've got some beautiful, this is what I love about Moroccan food, is they eat lots of fresh herbs as well. Yeah. And we've got lovely dill in here. There's some mint and coriander, which is uh, like really a, the most important Moroccan spice. Look, I want some more rama. <laughs> I want it creamy. You want it super creamy. So mm. it does help with the creaminess. It does. When it it comes to your travels, and now you did mention the fact that you love to share your yes. love for Morocco with everyone basically around you. Mind yes. you, I'm waiting for my very own invites to Morocco. <laughs> but what is it about sharing these memories, these foods, and these flavors with your loved ones? Do you know what it is? I just think food brings people together. Mm. And I, I come across so many young guys that remember as my mother used to make, and you want to give them a slap actually, because now I'm your wife, you know, I'm not your mother anymore. But people remember those wonderful things from their childhood that yeah. their parents passed down. And mm. if I were to just think of the people you like to share these moments and memories with, who gets to be on that guest list? And what makes them so special to you in your life? Well, you know what? Um, I always, for me, friends are very important, but for me, family always comes first. Uh. But then you don't always have to, family are not always your friends either. <laughs> Some friends are just like family. So I have a, a handful of friends that are like really, they could be my blood. Mm. I mean, they are always at my dinner table. Always, always, always. What are other special memories? You know, I, I really feel like from what we just saw being in your kitchen, now you're in our kitchen, you're yes. telling us about your experiences. Being able to just touch base with you, not only here on Afternoon Express, I think is what's so special for me. We have always cooked up chicken in my household. Yes. I think chicken was like our protein of choice. 
For me, it's the value when it comes to the buck. It's yes. quite reasonable, yes. quite cheap, but also is so flavorful and you can Flavor. enjoy it. Mm, you can Absolutely. enjoy it like this. You know what chicken is? Chicken is such a flirt because it can go with anything. <laughs> it really can. Um, the chicken is wonderful because it pairs well with any country, with any spice, with any, any flavors. Mm. Um, so yeah, chicken for me is... My go-to. Magnifique. And whilst you add those finishing touches, I see you've got some pomegranate there as well for more mm. colour. I just want to remind all of our viewers, you know, nothing beats mom's delicious, hearty, homemade meals, no matter the occasion. Now to get your hands on this delicious recipe and be transported back to your own special moment, please do visit afternoonexpress.co.za and taste the love wherever you are. Now don't forget, Rama is giving away another grocery voucher to the value of 800 Rand. To stand a chance of winning this week's competition, tell us what your favorite dish cooked by a loved one is on the Afternoon Express Show Facebook or Twitter pages with the hashtag Rama Taste the Love. This week's competition closes at midday on Monday, the 22nd of November. And remember, every person who has entered and continues to enter the weekly competition with Rama goes into the final draw of a grand prize, a 5,000 Rand travel voucher, so you can reunite and share a meal with your loved ones, wherever they may be. T's and C's apply to both of these giveaways and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za Wherever food is made with love, you'll find Rama. Taste the love. It is always lovely to touch base with Jenny Morris and that Moroccan chicken recipe was absolutely delicious. But now we've reached my favorite part of the show where we get to indulge in all of the wonderful food that was made. And we also don't want our viewers to forget that they too can stand a chance to walk away with the Lazy Makotis hosting with the Lazy Makoti, a celebration of food cookbook. Let's eat, ladies. Yes. Now, before we do, Siswam, so you know we, came, we brought you here to work. <laughs> so please may you remind us, what did we prepare today? So first we started off with our potato and tuna salad. Um, it's got red onion, it's got delicious herbs, and it's creamy and delicious. Mm. And then we went on to our lamb chops. That's got ginger and pineapple. It's so fresh in your mouth. And then of course for dessert, our chocolate wreath cake. Absolutely. And we also had a bit of a special guest, Dumi, on your side. He wasn't able to join us for the wrap up because he's already full. Yeah, he's already full. <laughs> He's already eaten. <laughs> He's eaten almost half of it already, but we also made some chakalaka and chicken roll-ups that are tasty and divine and perfect for any parent and child. I love that. Dumi, whilst we're still on you, mm -hmm. girl, I want to find out, you know, on social media, we wanted to ask our viewers, how do they jazz up their potato salad? So many people have their own recipes, mm -hmm. their own tips and tricks. What would you say? Well, I'd have to say for me, it's also about, depending on the type of mayo you use, you also want to either tone it down or enhance the flavor. So I sometimes use stuff like your sour creams or your yogurts just to give it more body wow. and also it makes your potato salad go a long way meaning you can add mm. more if you're running because some of us use mayo so much the next thing you're left with just like a tablespoon so you want to <laughs> stretch it a bit and then I add all those additions to it like the sour cream or the yogurt mm. That sounds delicious. And I also, I'm excited to try those different variations. I don't think I've tried any of that. I know you like your potatoes, Valessa, and you probably do make your own potato salad as well. So when I offer in. What don't I put into my potatoes? <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, girl. Anything other than the kitchen sink, I definitely put in. I actually learned my recipe from my older brother, Osia mm. Oh, thank he you. He puts, pleasure, girl. He puts everything in the potato salad. But I love what the Lazy Makoti has done today. She kind of stripped it down to the basics, only adding that addition of uh, tuna. And I think that also that it adds another flavor variant. I would, wouldn't you agree? And the herbs also elevate mm. all those flavors, which is just great. Lovely. I'm loving this bundt cake. It is so moist. Thank you. You know, the one thing I do not like is when someone tells me about a chocolate cake mm. and I can't taste the chocolate and it mm. tastes watered down. I'm tasting the chocolate. I'm tasting the flavors you've got there. And it is moist. The biggest thing for me is making sure a cake is moist. Yeah. You definitely. don't want it dry. And girl, you hit it on the head. Thanks. And that potato <laughs> salad, um, and not only the potato salad, and the lamb chops. <laughs> How is that? I can see no one's dived into lamb chops just yet. Let's try, actually. Listen, we're going in. 
Alice go in as well. I'm just gonna give myself a nice serving. And the one thing I do love is the freshness of it. The freshness mm. of the salsa that goes well with those tangy flavors of the, the glaze that we put yeah. on there. I've already eaten so much throughout the show because <laughs> you know when the lazy makoti comes through, mm -hmm. you make sure, <laughs> and you did make sure, honey. You made sure with your cookbook. Congratulations yet again on your second cookbook. You are an award-winning author. So I can just only imagine the, the joy you're gonna bring into people's households. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And I can't wait to see all of you at home actually cook. Make sure to tag me. I can't wait to see it. Yes, that's such a good idea. She definitely wants to see all of those dishes. And thank you so much, Dumi. As always, girl, you know what time it is. You know what time it is, girl. <laughs> now we're back again on Thursday from 5.30 p.m. with another celebrated chef and cookbook author in our kitchen, Jackie Cameron. Don't miss it. But until then, I'm Zanzi City. Good night. Stay safe and happy eating. Goodbye. Nothing beats being free. For breakfast with the team, family brunches, or having the crowd around for life as it used to be. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.